You know, some days life can just really kick you down. Those mountains, they, they fight back. And we deal with that uncertainty and that unknown constantly. And at the end of the day, you just have to keep pushing and climb that damn mountain. So we've got Tim Olson in a rough patch right outside of your A. What do you get to say, Tim? No, my lungs don't work. My lungs not working. Got to take a breather, get, this, get the diaphragm working again. So we can head up. All right. I just couldn't, I couldn't catch a breath. I couldn't get that sick, nauseous feeling out of my chest, out of my stomach. And then I started throwing up like crazy and that helped for a little bit. I started moving again and I was able to just make that, you know, just that small change in my body from laying on the ground to just starting to move again and made it up that climb and it wasn't pretty. But basically I just put one foot in front of the other the rest of the day, never really had um, a powerful moment where I felt like I was moving, but I got to the rock and kissed it for my first time, and that was the most challenging moment I've ever had in my life. And kissing the rock in 2014, it, it's still my favorite run to date. And accomplishing that, having my family push in and prod me along was such an amazing experience and brought us even closer together. And that just shows what Hard Rock does. It just, it brings you close together. Your, your family, your friends, your, the strangers you meet along the way aren't strangers anymore. They're your best friends. And when you experience Hard Rock, everyone just around that area just becomes family to you. Silverton, the mountains, the towns that make up this course, are just, it's just filled with grit. The town, you're not gonna get rid of it. It's just so strong and it's just super fitting to run the hardest foot race in the town that was built on grit. I know there is a finite amount of butt time that I have with you. All right, so we're going to try to keep this to about an hour, uh, after which I'm going to turn it over to Podog, Mr. Killian, Miss Anna, and we're going to do the Hard Block Run, and then uh, we're going to get on with our afternoon. Hard Rock is so special for, for many reasons. First and foremost, all the people that put it on and care so much about every single person that's out there. and. There's no favoritism towards whether you're your first or last. Everyone is out there just trying to make sure you're having a great day and reaching that rock. No matter how long it takes you, you know, the ups and downs along the way, getting to that rock is just a really special moment in everyone's life who's done it. <laughs> then you think of just the history of Silverton, all the, the mines around the place. These people came to this new land and were just trying to survive, just trying to take care of their families and just giving it everything they have. And there's just so much love and energy and sacrifice and determination and grit put into those mountains.
race morning, I, I woke up and I felt Olympic. I felt ready to just take on the world. I just had this like bubbling energy inside that even though it was super early in the morning, I'm like, today's gonna be a good day. And I've only had that happen a few times in races when then you wake up and everything is just feeling right. The morning before Western States in 2012, I woke up and right next to my wife and we like looked over at each other and just smiled. And we didn't have to say any words, we just knew today was the day. And I woke up and today felt like that, like this is gonna be a special day. When you wake up in the morning and feel ready to go like that, that's just a, like right away such a good feeling. So I was able to just really collect myself. I had a few moments to just sit at the starting line and just focus on my breath for a while. So Dale sent us on our way and it's a very like homecoming type feeling where everyone just comes together and just excited for the day, excited to see what comes. I really took a step back and realized that I pushed it too hard in 2014 and this was the year that I was going to be smart, I was going to be patient. Start the big climb up to, to Grand Swamp Pass and one of my favorite parts of the race. Seeing Island Lake, you know, below and above, it's just so beautiful. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
about to enter the oven. Hot part of the day. Made it into Telluride. And, you know, it's just a party down there. So many people. Telluride's such a beautiful town. I was just so happy to be running down there, feeling good. You see your family, you see your crew, and that just really lifts your spirit. Or dinosaur roar. Uh, <laughs> how much do I got till you're ready? Ten, fifteen. Cool. Look good. Thanks. Cool. Okay. <laughs> In 2014, I felt much more worn at that time, so I was really excited that I was feeling good. To go up the big pass uh, over Virginia is a huge climb. I felt really good leaving Telluride and, and just waiting to see what will happen next. Back in the San Juans, back for round two of Hard Rock and everything it has to deliver and prepared mentally better than I've ever been prepared for a race and I feel really fit. I've been running up and down 14ers and I'm, I'm feeling strong. And then just mentally prepared. I think I started off too hard the first year and so this year I'm not worrying about the competition. I'm just trying to run my own race and just kind of see how it evolves from there. I think I have a really good game plan of going into this one and being patient and just present in the moment. And hopefully I can just use all the lessons I learned and apply them to this year. And you know, no matter the results, just hopefully have a satisfying experience and give it my all. So I got down off of Virginius, slipping and sliding on the snow, trying to glissade, not very pretty. Again, I just started feeling really nauseous. My stomach was all off and ended up having to go into the bathroom a few times. And, and then along Camp Bird Road, ah, just everything fell apart. I was having all these deja vu moments from 2014. I was throwing up everything that was in me and people were starting to pass me and I was just losing heart and I had to stop on the side of the road for a little bit and 
I was just feeling really defeated in that moment. I just put everything into this race and I'm just having a really tough time after Virginius and going down Camp Bird Road and I was being passed by more and more people and my confidence was just shooking. You're gonna get back there. Brian Powell came past me and Brian knows how much this race means to everyone and he stopped. He could tell that I was feeling miserable and just gave me the biggest hug and he just told me that I'm so much more than a racer trying to get first place. He told me that, you know, I'm a I'm a good father, I'm a good husband, I'm a good ambassador for the sport and it just really touched my heart right there and I was keeping it together before that and then I just started bawling having Brian just give me a big hug and, and tell me things are, are gonna be okay and you'll get through this tough time. That moment just really meant a lot to me and even though I was defeated, even though I was throwing up all over the place, even though I was laying in the road, I wasn't ready to give up yet. He came in and he just sort of collapsed onto the ground and I could tell, you know, everyone, it was very obvious that he was really exhausted and was not feeling like himself. You know, that's when the race gets real. That's when it's not about place and it's not about time. You know, it's just about feeling the emotion, feel the energy of all the people that are behind you and everyone else um, a part of this race that you just don't want to give up and you just want to keep giving your all, even though your all is feeling pretty shaken at that time. As a crew and a pacer as I see it is do whatever I can to kind of help them and meet them wherever they are. And that was my hope that, that he was gonna continue on. And, you know, sure enough, he, he got back up and, and we walked out of URA and, you know, hiked back up the pass. Thanks for giving me your mom, Sophia. <laughs> You really have to embrace the unknown. Um, you can try how you want to, to script it, how you see the day going and have these plans, but the mountains don't care. Um, they're indifferent to whatever plans, whatever hopes you have. You have no choice but to just embrace the moment and be present and accept whatever comes your way. <laughs> When it's rocky, when it's at its hardest point, is when the magic happens. What's your number? Point. Once you get what past that, it's all gravy. And the second we put it behind us, our pace picked up every foot we got away from Handy's Peaks. I started to feel that energy again of wanting to push, wanting to be an animal out there.
then all of a sudden, me and Matt just started charging down into Cunningham, the last aid station. I don't know what came over me, but I think the pain that I was feeling, the exhaustion I was feeling, all that didn't matter. You're running six and seven minute miles downhill. Rocks are flying everywhere, dust is kicking up. It was so much fun, all of a sudden I was just a kid out there again. As I entered Silverton, that's where everything comes to the surface. All the emotions throughout the day, all the training, all of life just comes alive. I'm just flooded with gratitude for the moment, for my family, the crew, my pacers. There's so many people that, that show me love and support and I couldn't do this without them. For me, finishing this race, there was a, a turning point where I know I have much more in my legs. I know I have much more in my heart. I know that I've had a few rough years, but I knew there was something coming alive in me that there's more to come. Yeah.